So today we will be doing a, a lecture on uh, from the unit fifth, and this topic is uh, introduction to soft computing. I'm Pankaj Agarwal from IMS Engineering College, Kazakhstan. Now, uh, first of all, in order to understand what exactly this soft computing branch of science is, you need to understand uh, something uh, on how we actually solve a problem in real world. Suppose I've been given a problem. So what are the different ways of solving such problems? So precisely we can uh, uh, categorize the problem solving uh, techniques into two broad categories. One is your hard computing approach and other approach that we would be doing today. Now, just assume that if I've been given a problem and if I need a solution, uh, if I need a computational solution. So, and uh, for that, solution what i need is i need a precise input i need to have an input which is correct because as we all know why by the one human architecture if the input is correct the garbage in garbage out if the input is not correct then we are not expecting any kind of uh, useful results so we need an input and definitely if the input is correct we can produce a right output unless i have a good algorithm i have a correct algorithm so i also need an algorithm so when I say that I need an algorithm, it actually means that I know the procedure that how to solve that problem from the start to the end. I know the steps from one to the end number of steps that is required to solve that problem. But if you can look upon uh, uh, around us, that there are a number of huge number of problems, real world problems, which cannot have a precise algorithm. It cannot have understanding of how that problem can be solved example if i say that uh, if i have to predict the weather of tomorrow or someday uh, in the near future then it is not possible i cannot have a well written algorithm which can precisely uh, predict what would be the weather if i want to predict that how it is going to whether it was going to rain tomorrow or not it would not be possible for me to do so the so reason being very simple there are a number of problems in real world which cannot be solved by applying uh, full fledged algorithm. I cannot have a well-written algorithm for these kind of problems. For similarly, you have uh, problems related to game playing. I cannot write an algorithm to play a game and then win every time, right? So understanding this uh, issues, so there's another branch of complex science, which is a, more, a very emerging branch of complex science, and that is called uh, soft computing. So the problem which I could perceive, or if you can perceive uh, with most of the real world problems is that there could be issues uh, with the input. There could be cases where the input is not precise. There could be the cases where the input is not certain. There could be the cases where we have, uh, we only know the partial truth about the inputs or the problem. So this is an issue. So if in case the input is not uh, complete or imprecise or immature or uncertain, then how do we go about? If you can recall that human beings are perfect at solving these kind of problems. We human beings are very well trained somehow. God has given us such a brain that we can handle a lot of impreciseness, we can handle a lot of uncertainties, and still we're able to produce the correct output in most of the cases with a lot of preciseness. So that is the overall motive of the soft computing as a branch of science is. It is a branch of science that deals with imprecision among the input. It deals with uncertainty in the input. It deals with the cases where we doesn't know about the partial truth. So, but still I want to solve those kind of problems with uh, near degree to approximation degree, uh, to some degree of uh, approximation. Uh, definitely cannot uh, expect that these uh, problems would be solved uh, with these kind of inputs to a greater degree of uh, exact solution, but yes, the way human mind uh, resolve these problems, we are able to solve these problems with, with a huge degree of uh, approximation to the correct value. So that is what is the actual uh, principle on which the soft computing would be working upon. Right? Soft computing actually uh, draws its motivation from uh, things around uh, us that looks uh, around us. So if we can uh, recall like uh, even uh, uh, the ants, if you have uh, if you have noticed some, some time, like ants, when they work in a coordinated fashion, they're able to work uh, in a coordinated fashion such a way that they're able to solve when big problems, which is beyond imagination. 
looking at the size of the ants. So, so soft computing actually draws a lot of motivation from the biological concepts, biological methodologies that exist around us. Some of them uh, includes genetics and evolution, from where we learn about the survival of the fittest uh, concept given by the Charles Darwin. Similarly, the behavior of ants or many other kind of suspicious organisms. Similarly, the particle swarming uh, process, human nervous system. So, so soft computing actually talks about solving a problem which have a lot of issues with the input, even in the cases uh, where we doesn't know about the algorithm. So most of the problems, uh, there might be a number of problems that uh, I have uh, given some examples, like we doesn't know about how to go about the solution, how to achieve a solution. So still, I want to apply some technique or some method so that I can achieve some kind of solution. Uh, and I want a solution which uh, has a high degree of uh, correctness. So that is what is the overall motivation of the soft computing is. Now, soft computing uh, works very well or uh, it comes to our uh, solution uh, we, when we start considering the soft computing as solution only when the mathematical model does not uh, exist or we doesn't know about the mathematical modeling. We doesn't know how to model it mathematically. So if that is the case, then uh, soft computing is one of the uh, tools that we can look upon. We may need a solution to uh, complex problems in real world time. So even that case, uh, soft computing would be a very handy. And we also want a solution which uh, is easy to adapt with the changing scenarios because uh, definitely the algorithms, uh, which we normally call them hard computing algorithms, they need a fixed environment. They need a fixed environment. They need a fixed input. They need a fixed kind of a perfect kind of algorithm. So, so soft computing is very handy when uh, these kind of problems or issues exist. And most importantly, most importantly, we also need to, to uh, solve these problems uh, in such a way that parallel computation is possible. For example, if I have to uh, recognize a face, if I have to do a job or any kind of real world problem, suppose which a human does. So we does not work in a single direction. We does not uh, work in a serial fashion. So I need a solution that can work in a parallel and uh, distributed manner. So that is one of the important issues because unless uh, the computing power, even with the uh, biggest of computing powers, we would not be able to achieve something. So parallel computation is something which is the prime requirement for uh, solving any kind of such problems. Now, it has a number of applications and it has picked up very nicely. These days, uh, soft computing, uh, last 10 years, it has picked up very nicely and there are numerous number of uh, examples uh, in uh, all the domains, in fact, whether you talk about computer vision, whether you talk about medical diagnosis, whether you talk about recognition, of, uh, whether it's speech recognition, handwriting recognition, whatsoever, pattern recognition techniques, machine intelligence, weather forecasting. There are a number of areas where, in fact, there's no area untouched where soft computing applications are not working these days. So broadly, there are, in fact, uh, a number of techniques which comes under the category of soft computing, but uh, Broadly, we study three basic uh, areas. One is neural network, which we have already covered as a part of the subject uh, from unit one to unit four. And uh, another area which is very popular is evolutionary computing, where we actually concentrate more on genetic algorithms. And uh, another area is the fuzzy logic, where we talk about uh, fuzzy system, where we talk about fuzzy uh, inputs. So these are the areas that we need to talk about. Uh, we will skip neural networks as we have already covered this uh, in our entire unit. So first talk about logic, uh, fuzzy logic. When we say fuzzy, the word fuzzy means that something which is not clear, input which is not clear. If I say that uh, it will rain today, so it is something, uh, there's a statement of preciseness. I'm able to say the statement with some kind of preciseness, isn't it? So whether it would be, true or whether it would be false, right? But in terms of fuzzy, in the same statement, if I say that it may rain today. So the moment I use may, it becomes fuzzy. I doesn't know uh, what could be, uh, what would be the definition of that may. For some person, it may rain today. He, when he say it may rain today, and he may be saying that with some degree of uh, uh, assurance and his degree of assurance may be true. 
and other person may have said like that way only right so fuzzy talks about fuzzy statements it talks about fuzziness into my inputs fuzzy can be so the moment i start using linguistic variables may might be it may be like so these statements if i say that x is taller than y now this statement again is fuzzy statement because i doesn't know what is the definition of tallness so if i ask a computer to uh, solve uh, to process this information like x is taller than y it would be difficult for a computer because the computing solution needs the definition of the tallness so that is the reason why you need something which can also deal this fuzzy system fuzzy inputs and uh, we all know that we as human beings are very very good at dealing with these fuzzy logic we are very good at dealing with these fuzzy linguistic variables right so we wanted to have a system where some kind of decision making related to fuzzy inputs can be made by the systems and that is what is the entire entire concept of fuzzy logic systems is so it is a technique that understands the vagueness of the solution because when we say that may rain today so there is a vagueness associated with the solution with the input and presents the solution with some degree of vagueness which is uh, practical to human decision so plain and simple we uh, need a system we need to create a systems which can deal such kind of vagueness but still we can produce the output which is perfect one or near to perfect it is widely applied in number of application areas uh, mainly in industrial applications where they talk about washing machine so uh, the washing machine uh, turns off automatically after some set period of time so this is uh, it is able to take a decision in terms of when we on and switch off of fan and when we start uh, using that uh, uh, timer of the fan so we are able to put the speed uh, uh, low and high so this is all comes under the uh, uh, under the uh, logic uh, fuzzy logic systems so we normally uh, fuzzy logic has been very popular in uh, and actually uh, marked the beginning of industrial revolution also in uh, late 90s 80s right so where we started uh, embedding the code we started embedding the logic into my devices so fuzzy logic has been very popular and it was given by uh, uh, z a lofty scientist called zd lofty who recently i suppose died so fuzzy logic has been there since uh, very long and it has been uh, being used in industrial applications in fact now it is being used in almost all the domains of areas similarly evolutionary computing is another branch where uh, we start uh, looking at how the evolution takes place how the evolution from one generation to next generation gets into so it actually talks about the survival of the fittest concept we talk about uh, how the solutions from one generation or how the if you know that uh, in evolutionary computing we have uh, parents and from parents the genes are copied into their offspring so that is how the generation to generation carries on so it is basically optimization algorithm so we'll be talking about uh, genetic algorithm specifically so again it has a number of applications and number of uh, it is inspired by number of uh, uh, techniques genetic algorithm survival of the creatures such as swarm intelligence and colonization methods uh, artificial bee colony optimization techniques and then many other biological processes neural network as we all know is a network of uh, coordinated and uh, uh, distributed and parallel uh, coordination of artificial neurons each neuron being having the capacity of processing so it is inspired by biological neurons it is inspired by how a uh, human mind works how a human mind learns and uh, gets trained and solves a problem so we have already covered uh, neural network in depth so i can skip that so let us first uh, go uh, directly to uh, the first technique that i'll be covering is the genetic algorithm which uh, comes or studied under the uh, section of uh, uh, evolutionary computing so what exactly genetic algorithm is all about so genetic algorithm is uh, specifically a search algorithm it is an a search and as well as an optimization technique to so search for a solution so we are given a set of solution in a very simple words we are given a set of solutions we start with set of solutions and then we start looking for the most optimized solution because this is also an issue so if i ask you to to search a needle in the uh, in, in some house or in some uh, room which is full of some uh, some other materials then 
there has to be a well defined or well coordinated way of uh, searching so searching might be a very computationally intensive task so genetic algorithm is basically it does a search and it also talks about optimizing that search in each and every step so that is about genetic algorithm is uh, it actually uh, tries to mitigate the biological process of something called uh, fittest uh, survival of the fittest problem, which was given by the uh, Sir Charles Darwin. So, where in every iteration, the solutions uh, would be uh, evaluated in terms of their fitness, and uh, with the time, uh, those solutions uh, would be moving towards more and more fitter solutions. In the same manner, when uh, we talk about uh, passing upon the genes from one generation to next generation. So when you pass upon the genes from next generation to next generation with a kind of concept where we can start uh, uh, having fitter chromosomes uh, survives and uh, weaker chromosomes uh, die upon with the generations. So that is what uh, uh, genetic algorithm is all about. So genetic algorithms basically uh, talks about uh, the biological concepts of genetics, uh, which includes inheritance, which includes mutation. Inheritance, I suppose everyone knows inheriting features from the parents mutation is something which is called errors when the, some kind of biological errors uh, gets uh, uh, inducted into a genes so that is called mutation similarly selection selection process how the how which of the two parents would be selected in order to give uh, uh, offspring this is also a selection problem and then the crossover that how the two parents would be crossed over in order to get a new offspring so these biological concepts are uh, put into some form of algorithm and uh, that is what genetic algorithm is all about. So as I've told, it is based on the uh, Darwin's natural selection uh, theory of uh, survival of the fittest. Now, in order to get some rough idea about uh, uh, genetic algorithm, let us uh, talk about a very simple procedure. See, mind you, we, uh, in this uh, subject, we doesn't need to understand uh, genetic algorithm in a full length. We don't need to understand what exactly uh, the uh, fuzzy logic is uh, in the full depth. The concept is required as a part of the syllabus. And then uh, we would be talking that how uh, all these techniques, neural networks, genetic algorithms, and then fuzzy logic can be integrated in order to get, in order to solve the problems. So that is what is we are aiming for. So I just uh, would be giving some idea about what these procedures are, or what these techniques are all about. So genetic algorithm basically, uh, uh, if you talk about the procedure, then it starts with some set of initial solutions, some set of initial solutions. And those solutions are uh, one of the feasible solutions that uh, we are looking for. So these solutions may not be the target solutions, but we can start with some solutions and the task is to reach to a solution, which is the optimum solution, right? And uh, the, the challenge is that we doesn't know how to search the biggest challenge is that we doesn't know how to search. What would be the, my next search step? I doesn't know. If I knew that, if I knew already that what and uh, how to search, then we would have not been talking about genetic algorithms. We would have been talking about some other uh, efficient search technique. So the challenge is that we can start search from uh, initial position uh, for initial solutions, but we doesn't know, have no idea about that how uh, and how I would search this where would be my direction of search. That is the, uh, the initial problem that I have. So we'll start with the initial population, which would be calling, uh, we would be uh, deciding it randomly. Then, uh, then we would be selecting that uh, which all solutions uh, would be used in order to, to do, the, uh, do the crossover. So that in the same way that uh, uh, one generation to next generation gets produced. So in the uh, in one generation, what we do is we select the parents that we cross over those parents in order to produce a new offspring. So selection is there. We select the parents that we do the crossover, right? And uh, doing the crossover might uh, also involve a process of mutation because while doing the crossover, while producing offspring, it may happen that some kind of genes may get uh, wrongly uh, into the offspring. So there might be some errors into the uh, into the genetic structure of the while passing from one generation to next generation. So mutation and crossover would be something which uh, from one generation to next generation can be carried upon. And once an offspring is produced, see offspring means a solution, a new solution. So once a new solution is produced, we have to see that how effective that solution is, how good that solution is. So we would be talking about the fitness of the solution. 
we would be talking about that how good that solution is, how fit that solution is, right? So once we uh, evaluate the fitness of the solution, then we can decide upon whether that solution we want to keep for the next generation or not, or whether that solution can be forwarded to the next generation or not. So with an assumption that we would start with some, kind of, some uh, set of solutions, that we keep on producing new generations of good solutions with an assumption or with a uh, uh, kind of a target that we are looking for a better solution. So after some set of generation or after a fixed set of generations, we are expected to get a good solution, a good offspring, a good solution as we move from one generation to next generation. Although there are a number of other issues or number of uh, midway points and midway procedures that are involved uh, while doing the such procedure. Uh, let us do one thing. I'll do a, a simple example in order to give you some kind of insight that how uh, this uh, can work because uh, there's no point in talking about uh, genetic algorithms in too much of details. So the, uh, as a part of the algorithm, we have to, the first procedure would be to create some kind of initial but random population set. See, when I say initial uh, random population set means I'm talking about some set of solutions we, which may not be the target solution, which I, ha I have to reach from some initial solutions to the final solutions. So I can take uh, gener uh, randomly generate certain solutions which uh, may or may not be useful at this point of time. So from these initial set of populations or the solutions, we need to first evaluate that which all solutions are good enough or not. And then we would keep on generating the new set of solutions by the process of uh, mutation and uh, crossover. And then in each generation, we can uh, we can evaluate the performance or evaluate the fitness of these solutions and then appropriately we can decide whether to keep those solutions or not and uh, because uh, if we would keep uh, on adding the fitter solutions then by doing the crossover of the fitter solutions we are expected to get a more fitter solutions so that is what is the approach while uh, uh, doing this procedure we'll take a uh, working example on this of the identical pattern Suppose that I have been given a very simple example where I have to, I have to do what I have to maximize. I have to maximize the functions. Suppose f x is equal to x square, right? Now, in order to do so, see the example is very simple, but we would be able to understand uh, the different uh, stages of genetic algorithm through this. So, let us do a, a kind of a validation also. Like uh, we have kept a validation that. The inputs where input is x and the, uh, the function is x square. So the input can uh, come into the range of you know, 0 and 31. So x can be in the range of only 0 to 31, right? And we need to find a number x which can maximize x uh, this function. That is x square has to be the largest value, right? So as a part of the algorithm, uh, what we need to do is uh, as a step uh, first, see. Uh, here the solution uh, is in terms of what uh, x the solutions are what x so all the solutions would be in terms of x from 0 to 31 so mind you that we are not going to go in a in a sequence manner that is we doesn't know the sequence first of all you know, just for the example we have taken this i doesn't know that uh, like a normal algorithm would have gone from suppose 0 to 31 in form of loop so i doesn't uh, we will not go in this direction we doesn't know in what direction and what variable would come first and what would be the next value that I would generate. So this generation must be automatic in such a way that this search, because the generation uh, towards the solution, uh, this solution, uh, solution should be such that my search should be in the right direction. My search towards the fittest solution. My search towards the best solution should be in the right direction, right? So. Uh, as a part of the initial step, what we'll be doing is we can create an uh, initial population set. Initial population set means that we would uh, start taking a random initial set of solutions, depending upon uh, whatever uh, strategy that we start following, that would, uh, would be the size of the population set. Suppose for this particular problem, I have taken what uh, that initial population set will contain a size of five, and I have randomly taken five uh, values of x and i have also done one thing that i have converted this value of x into i've encoded them into binary form because uh, what would happen like while solving a problem 
say uh, uh, sometimes these solutions because this genetic algorithm is all about the number game so we need to uh, convert the uh, inputs which may be in uh, nominal which may be in different forms so we need to convert these inputs into some suitable form and uh, most of the cases binary is considered to be a very suitable form for processing so just for explanation part we have converted this each and every uh, taken input into its binary form so i have randomly taken what uh, considered 6 3 10 21 and 1 so i have taken this binary their value and then uh, if we talk about the fitness if we talk about the fitness of these values it would be definitely the fun after applying that function so uh, the fitness value has been recorded here see when we take a solution the uh, whenever we are going to uh, take a decision in terms of whether i am going to take that solution or not it has to be in terms of the fitness so over here the fitness function was pretty simple that fitness function can be very complex it can be mathematically it can be uh, otherwise also it can be very very complex function so so the uh, we need to evaluate the fitness of each and every every input so these are the inputs and then we have evaluated the performance and fitness of each and every input now the question is from this is the initial population set this is just the initial set now we need to move to the next stage next stage means that we need to move towards the next stage or next uh, population or next generation which would expect it to contain more fitter chromosomes or more fitter solutions right we need to and we cannot decide randomly this time and now onwards we would not decide randomly randomization is only till the initial part so what is the procedure so this is the initial set now the second stage is the selection now we need to select the parents we need to select the parents the way it is done naturally and then we would be doing the crossover and mutation on them and then we would be producing new solutions new values right and then we would be again reevaluating the fitness of each and every solution and this procedure would continue till we either get uh, a fitter chromosome as per our requirement or uh, either we can do it uh, say like after 10 generations we can stop and say that which of the solution which of which among the uh, solution is the fittest solution and then we can just take that particular solution right so from this step we would do what we need to decide upon that which first of all i need to decide that uh, what all solutions are not fitter and i don't want to uh, discard them or i don't want to take those solutions to the next generation so in this case suppose based on the fitness value i have decided that string 5 which has a fitness value of just one i can just reject this right so this is a decision that i have made uh, based on the fitness value about that what all uh, in uh, what all solutions will not be taken to the next generation and this happens naturally also the chromosomes are which are weak enough species which are weak enough with the concept uh, of uh, one generation to next generation they of, often are lost even the uh, such uh, strong chromosomes like uh, dinosaur chromosomes also were lost in between right so this happens naturally also so what we have done is we would not be considering the string five and we would not be taking it into the next generation now the thing is uh, first of all i have to decide that what would be the selection so i have to decide the selection criteria i have to decide that which two chromosomes which two parents would be taken and would be muted and would be crossed over and that decision can be again uh, so it can be some based on some scheme or it can be random also right so suppose for example i have considered that i'll uh, make a pair of suppose string 1 and string 2 and similarly i'll make a pair of suppose string 3 and 4 so well, uh, making a string one and string two as a pair, I have decided a, a crossover point. X position is actually is a crossover point, right? I've decided this to be a position four. I'll talk about this. And similarly, I have made another pair that is string three would be crossover with uh, string four. So mind you, string one and string two over here becomes parents. String three and string four becomes a parent. And the next task would be to produce the offspring from these two strings, right? So these are the two strings, string one and string two. If you see, string one is what? Double zero, double one zero, right? And string two is triple zero one one, right? So double zero, double one zero, and triple zero one one. So these are two strings, right? Now this crossover point means, see, have, see, I have uh, put up uh, this vertical bar at the fourth position. So it means what? It is actually deciding the crossover point. It means what? So when we would obtain uh when we would be doing a crossover on these two strings what we'll be doing is 
the first uh, uh, string uh, which would be produced, or the first offspring which would be produced from these two strings would be the case when I would take all the bits from uh, zero, uh, from the first position to the third position, uh, so uh, till the fourth position from the string one, that is zero, zero, one, one, I would take it from what? String one. And I would take the fourth, uh, fifth bit, I'll take the fifth bit from string two. So that means I've crossed over these two strings at the position of uh, uh, four, right? So this is called crossover position. So what we would get is a new string. That is important. What we would get is a new solution, right? And similarly, I can do the reverse way. I can take what four bits from here and one bit from the first string. So I would get two offsprings from two parents. Mind you, this is not a compulsory kind of thing that uh, two parents would produce two offsprings only. We can get what one offspring and even we can have different combinations to produce more than two offsprings also. Again, all the natural phenomenon, all the natural uh, uh, procedure is being uh, inculcated into the entire procedure, right? So what we got right now is two different solutions, right? What we got is two different solutions. See, that is where we are doing the search. That is where we have doing the search. We have not decided, we doesn't know that from string one or from uh, the previous set where to go. So where I'm going is decided by the offsprings. These new offsprings actually decides upon what would be the next solution, right? So I doesn't know, I was, I had no idea about that, what would be the next solution. That is what actually happens in some of the, uh, the phenomena, some of the real world problems. I doesn't know what would be the next step. So, so wherever these, uh, these search becomes an issue, for example, if I take, uh, for example, if, I, if I'm making the blades of a fan, and suppose there are a number of uh, features which decides the blades of that pen. Suppose it can be sharpness, it can be the width, it can be number of issues, right? Number of features. So I doesn't know which of the feature must be set so that I can get a target uh, shape of my fan, uh, of my uh, fan blade. So, so uh, if, when we doesn't know about that, how to optimize different uh, features, how to uh, optimize different uh, uh, the different uh, columns of my data, then somewhere uh, we need an optimization method. We need an optimization method which takes its own course. So that is where the uh, genetic algorithm is very uh, uh, useful and it works beautifully. Right? So as of now, we have obtained what two new solutions. In a similar fashion, we would have been, uh, we have done it with uh, strength three and four. And again, we have obtained what? The two new offsprings. This time we have done what? Uh, use the crossover point of two. So again, that is also possible. We can keep changing the crossover points, right? Uh, doing the different crossovers. Now, this was just a crossover operation. So we have com uh, completed what? Uh, uh, what we have done as uh, so initial population. We have done the selection procedure. We have done an encoding method. So these are all important points of uh, genetic algorithm. And now we have done the crossover. Now, the next point is your uh, mutation. So Mutation is some things, for example, uh, after obtaining uh, one of these string one, so this was a string that we obtained. So this could be a case that this, uh, there could be an error in terms of this uh, zeroth bit, this uh, bit which is shown in red, may get flipped to one. So this is an error actually. This is an error in which we are doing it deliberately here in order to explain the concept of a mutation. So mutation is nothing but uh, genetic errors. The errors that get creep into the, at the time of uh, crossover, at the time of uh, producing the offsprings, right? So similarly, uh, in string four, we have done for one of the strings, we have done a mutation at a bit three. So now this, these two new solutions that we obtained that can be recorded into the next population set or the next generation, right? So this is how, suppose, after the first population set or first initial population set, we have generated after doing the, uh, uh, the crossover and mutation. And suppose now we have got this. Now, now what is to be looked over here is that in this generation, we will start looking for a, a solution which, uh, whether we have achieved a solution which was fitter than the previous set. Yes, in the previous set, the highest value was 441, a solution with the fitness value of 441. Here we obtained a value which has a fitness of 529. And that is what actually we're looking for. So this, generation to generation uh, can go upon and then uh, we can start looking for or we can start recording the uh, fittest value 
and if we are not able to get a much better value from one generation to next generation and we can uh, decide upon the convergence also this convergence can also be decided upon by taking the fixed number of steps anyway that can be uh, different things can be uh, worked upon on this kind of, kind of cases so so uh, iteration uh, so this is about like uh, how would i decide uh, the convergence state it can be the number of generations can be made fixed we can talk about the beds witness that we have obtained till now the process time can be the determination point or it can be the normally what we do is till uh, we see that no improvements after a number of generations so for example if we take or uh, end of uh, the step one as my the convergent state so the fittest uh, chromosome that we obtained is of value of 529 so this was all about uh, genetic algorithms and i hope uh, it must have given you some idea about that what is the procedure involved in genetic algorithms and how do we uh, how do we apply this natural phenomena to solve uh, the problems and the problems uh, that we solve uh, uh, it is basically suited to uh, cases where we we doesn't know that which all parameters uh, i have to take which all parameters and how to optimize those parameters so normally when we have number of parameters and we doesn't know how to optimize them that is where this genetic algorithm is uh, used as an initial step to uh, solution see mind you this is not any specific uh, uh, machine learning algorithm or like a, a neural network like of technique it is basically a search and optimization techniques that's it so in the next lecture uh, we would be doing uh, uh, something on uh, fuzzy logic and then uh, in next to next lecture then we will be talking uh, more about how we can integrate uh, the three concepts beautiful concepts in order to solve uh, real time problems that exist around us right so thank you for now